Today, for my London walk, I'm going to the city of London. And to get there, I'm taking London's shortest underground line, just 1.47 miles long, the Waterloo and City Line. There are just two stations on the Waterloo and City Line. Here it's Waterloo and the other at Bank, which until 1941 was known as City. It's by far the shortest line on the underground network, being 1.47 miles long, with an end-to-end -end journey time lasting just four minutes. The Waterloo and City Line, originally known as the Waterloo and City Railway, was created to provide a direct link between Waterloo Station and London's financial centre. It was opened in 1898 by the London and South Western Railway. In 1923, the LSWR became part of the Southern Railway. And from 1948, the Waterloo and City Line was operated by British Railways Southern Region. On the 1st of April 1994, the line was transferred to London Underground for the sum of one pound. The Waterloo and City Line is known as the Drain. It's possible the name comes from the fact that the tunnels leading under the Thames were notoriously leaky, causing them to need to be pumped out. But it might also be because of this big slope that passengers had to walk down to Bank Station. In 1960, London's first travelator was open to whisk passengers from the Waterloo and City Line to the rest of the underground network. This is Mansion House, the residence and offices of the Lord Mayor of London. Just a few yards away is the Royal Exchange Building. The Royal Exchange was founded in the 16th century by the merchant Sir Thomas Gresham to act as a centre of commerce for the City of London. Just across the road is the Bank of England, known as the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street. There's a queue outside. I'm not sure. It might be people trying to obtain money before it runs out. Or maybe queuing to go to the Bank of England Museum. There are many little alleyways in the city worth exploring. I don't suppose this was the first Costa coffee shop. There's a traditional ritual held on formal ceremonial occasions where the monarch requests the permission of the Lord Mayor of London to enter the city of London. 
If the king decides to jump into the Bentley and nip down to the shops, I don't suppose anyone's going to arrest him. The Gherkin is one of the city's newer buildings, but there are some much newer and even more buildings going up. You'll hear the building noise during this video. The Lloyds Building is the home of the insurance institution Lloyds of London. It was opened to great fanfare in 1986. And now to one of my favourite places in the city, Leadenhall Market. A market has stood here since 1321. It survived the Great Fire of London, but has been rebuilt several times since then. It stood in for Diagon Alley in the first of the Harry Potter films. This is known as the Walkie Talkie Building. There's a sky garden on the 35th floor. Free to visit. I'm not going there today. Uh, nothing to do with being afraid of heights, of course. I'm doubling back on myself a bit now and heading back towards Bank. Back past the people queuing for money and back past Mansion House to a street called Poultry. And now I'm at the Guild Hall. This building has been used as a town hall for several hundred years and is still the ceremonial and administrative centre of the City of London. Noble Street is the location of parts of the Roman Wall of London. It was exposed when a bomb fell in the area during World War II. Um, Just around the corner is the London Museum. The Postman Park was opened in 1880. In 1900 it became the location for George Watts Memorial to Heroic Self-Sacrifice, honouring people who died while saving the lives of others. Probably the best known building in the City of London is Sir Christopher Wren's St Paul's Cathedral.
I'm heading back to Waterloo Station on the number 26 bus. Often, if you pick the right route, the bus is the best and cheapest way to see London. I'm passing down Fleet Street, past the Law Courts and over Waterloo Bridge. Well, I'm back at Waterloo. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.